you can draw this and procreate. During this procreate tutorial, I am going to guide you through the process of painting this lovely landscape. We'll start with these basic shapes and then we'll work from the back to the front. First, we'll create our sky, then we'll add texture to the mountains, create the forest in the background and then trees in the foreground. Once you have followed this tutorial all the way to the end, you will be amazed by your own results and you will just want to share it. If you are sharing it on social media, on Instagram, then don't forget to tag me in the image, not just in the description, because that way I will be able to find your work and maybe we'll see it in the next video. Just like these fantastic results from my friends at Patreon. That's the place to go if you need to satisfy your procreate addiction and follow even more tutorials, because there I have more than 100, ranging from beginner level to more advanced levels. To get started with this tutorial, what you need is a canvas of 3000 by 2000 pixels and a color profile set to sRGB. And you can download the colors we'll be using through the link in the description. It's totally free. The Procreate brushes we'll be using during this tutorial are also free. Some of the brushes are already in the app. And there are some free brushes from my special treasure chest brush pack, which you can get by going to freefromflow.com. I've actually added two new brushes to the pack. So if you already got the treasure chest, then just read the weekly newsletter and follow the link there to get the new brushes. Now let's get started. First, we'll create a gradient for our sky. Let's do that on our first layer. And what we'll do is we'll add a color to our background, that first color in the first row of the color palette. We'll just drag it onto our screen. And then we are going to grab a soft brush. We are going to go to the airbrushing brushes and use the soft brush. Then for our color, we are going to use the second color in the first row of the color palette. Now the opacity of the brush is at 60% and the size is at 25%. And let's go over this area about halfway of our canvas. We want the top area to stay nice and dark blue. And we want the lower area to be a bit lighter. Just make an area like this. And then we are going to use Gaussian Blur by going to the magic wand, then hit Gaussian Blur, and then slide to the right with your pen or your finger. Slide to the right on the screen and create this nice gradient. Let's go for 40% and then tap the magic wand again. The next thing we'll do is create a mountain range in the background and we need to create a new layer for that. So let's go to the layer menu and tap the plus. Then we'll go and grab a different brush, one from the treasure chest brush pack. And it's the fine liner brush. And for the color for this brush, we are going to use this third color in the first row of the color palette. The opacity of this brush is set to 100% and let's set the size to 20%. And we are going to start at about, well, one fourth from the top and we'll make these random shapes for our mountain range. And you don't have to copy this exactly. Your mountain range can definitely look different than mine. Just don't hold your pen in place too long because then you will snap to the quick shape and you will get all of these straight lines. So no problem to take a break. Let's go a little bit lower here in the center area. Then back up a little bit. Make these jagged shapes and try to get some variation in your mountain range. Here, these diagonal shapes back up here. You can just use my mountain range as a guide and then create your own shapes. And once you have this zigzaggy line, we are going to fill the shape underneath, but you might need to adjust the color drop threshold. Now the way to do that is by dragging in the color and then sliding to the right to increase the color drop threshold and to make sure that you don't get any light edges. If you do get any light edges, then you can just go along your mountain range and fix some of those areas. So you don't miss anything. So you don't have any gaps. 
and just go along the edge. But I like using this fine liner brush because we get a nice textured little edge. It's not super clean. It'll look better for our mountains. So now that we have this, we can move on to our trees or well, the base of our trees that will be in front of our mountains. So let's make a new layer for that. Go to the layer menu, tap the plus for a new layer. And now for our brush, we will go to the artistic brushes. It's a standard set that is already in Procreate and we are going to use the Toro Leia brush. And for the color for our brush, we will use this fourth color in the first row. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and let's set the size to 5%. And now we are going to start here a little bit lower than our mountain range. And we are going to create this random shape again, a hilly shape. And you can see that it has a nice textured edge, but it also gives some color variation. We'll go back up here. So it's like a wavy line. And then let's just color the area underneath. Let's color that in. I'm just making these rounded motions. And you might not be able to see it on camera, but you will see it on your own iPad that you have all these blotches of color. So you get a color variation. That is a nice base for our forest. I'm going to go all the way down. I don't know why we are going to add a hill in front, but it just feels better filling everything. Then we are going to make a new layer on top so we can create our little hill in front and get some nice color contrast because our hill in front will be a bit yellowish green. And that's, that's a nice contrast with the blue. So let's tap the plus for a new layer and let's go back to the fine liner brush the brush from the treasure chest. You can either go back to the treasure chest brush pack or you can tap recent to check what brushes you used before. So let's grab the fine liner brush and for the color, we are going to use the second color in the third row. And now let's start again a little bit lower. It's about one third of the height of our canvas. And let's make a bit of a wavy line going all the way to the right and ending a little bit lower here. Then drag in the color. Again, make sure that you don't get a little gap here, but I think we're doing fine. Now that we have our basic shapes, we can analyze and see if we like our composition this way. I feel like we could actually use a little bit more mountain in the background. I want them to be a little bit higher. Now to do that, it's really easy. Let's just go to the layers and go to layer two. That's the mountain range layer. Then go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. Then over here under snapping, make sure you turn snapping on. And then we can just move it up. And you'll see that it'll snap and stick to that vertical line. And let's place it about here. I think they look all right over here. Let's tap the arrow again to get out of here. And of course, perhaps your mountains were already high enough. Perhaps you need to move other parts of your composition. You can just simply go to any of the layers and move them up or down until you have something that looks similar to this. Now that we are happy with our basic shapes, it's time to start working from the back to the front and add all the detail, all the texture to our painting. So since we are starting in the back, let's get started with the sky and add some fluffy clouds there. So first let's tap layer one, that's our sky layer, and let's make our clouds on a separate layer. So let's tap the plus. Now for our brush, we are going back to the treasure chest brush pack and we need the clouds brush. There we have it, our clouds brush. And for the color, we are going to use this color over here, the second color in the second row. It's a bit of a grayish, bluish color. And when painting clouds, I would suggest not starting out with a very light, almost white color. It's nice to start with a bit of a darker base and then build on top of that. So we're starting with this grayish color. 
Now the opacity of this brush is set to 73%. And let's check the size. Maybe we need 30%. Let's just check it out. That's a bit big. I'm going to make it smaller. Let's say 15%. And now we are going to make the basic shapes of our clouds. We'll start here behind these mountains. I want some clouds over here. Making multiple dabs and circular motions for a big shape over here. And then another one here. And it's going all the way to the right. And I think we can make our brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for perhaps 8%. Let's just try it out. That's nice. We'll go along the edges here and sculpt our cloud even more. Here we have a little part sticking out. Try to avoid making like the standard cloud shape. Try to create some parts sticking out a little bit, make it irregular. Nice and fluffy. Let's add a part here on top with a little gap here. You can see some blue of the sky through our through our cloud. And perhaps a little fluffy one over here. Now let's switch to our basic flow brush, which is also part of the treasure chest brush pack. It's here at the top. And for our color, let's grab a lighter one. Let's grab this one over here. The opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size is at 20%. And now let's go to the layer with the clouds we have just created and let's turn on alpha lock. Because that way we will only be able to paint on our clouds and we can add some lighter parts to them. So let's just add well, let's make these rounded motions and add some light to the top. And here on the right side, we're imagining, by the way, that the light is coming a bit from this direction. So parts of the clouds will also be lit. But try to not cover everything. Just a few blotches. So a little bit of variation on your cloud. Here as well. And try to make these small rounded motions. And this brush is a little bit transparent so you can slowly build it up. And try to focus on the top part of the cloud. Try to add most light there. Here, for instance, make this a little bit lighter. So we have some slight variation now. Next, we are going to turn off alpha lock on this layer. So tap the layer, tap alpha lock, and then we are going to use the smudge tool. That's the little finger up here. And we are going to use the wet acrylic brush. And we are going to use that to push and pull parts of our clouds. And the opacity of this brush is set to 50%. And let's set the size to maybe 7%. Let's just zoom in a little bit. And we can go along the edges of the clouds, make these rounded motions, dragging some parts of these clouds and adding some more rounded the tops here. We're trying to also keep these little fluffies that are floating above our cloud. And some areas you can make a little bit cleaner, a little bit more rounded with your smudge tool. And just making these circular motions. And we 
you make your brush even smaller, let's say 2% or maybe 3 you can also pull and make some like wispy shapes. Or pull this area. Some some clouds are a little bit wispy and have these kind of these parts floating, floating away from the cloud. And using the smudge tool is super handy for this. Let me make the brush a little bit bigger again, 7%. Now let's continue softening these clouds. And making them a little bit wispy in some parts. Just try to not overdo it. You can also push inward into the cloud to make some areas perhaps a little bit smaller, push it back. With the smudge tool, you can push and pull paint on your canvas. Then for this cloud, let's move in this direction. Again, these rounded motions. To clean up that top part. And then once you have done this, once you have made it softer, you can go back and grab the basic flow brush again with this light color and you can make it smaller let's say five percent and then you can add some little extras to the clouds like little fluffies here just make sure that you keep making these rounded motions And that you leave some darker areas that you don't go over the entire cloud just making it this color entirely. So just some of these rounded shapes over here as well, perhaps a little bit. Just some small parts. And on this side, also add some little parts of clouds they are part of that well they used to be part of this little wispy cloud here you have these little strands yeah like strands of cloud here you can add a little bit to this little wisp And here, I'm, I'm trying to focus on the tops of the clouds and add a little bit of light there and these rounded shapes. And we're almost there with these pretty basic, basic clouds. So rounded motions, a little bit over here. So it's mostly the top of the clouds and you can imagine that this is also a bulk of cloud and here we have a little top part as well that could also get hit by light and be a little bit lighter than the rest of the cloud. I think these clouds look lovely. Let's move on to the mountain range. For our mountain range just like with the clouds, what we did, we are going to turn on alpha lock first. So tap the layer, turn on alpha lock, so we can paint on it without going over our sky. For the brush, we will go to the industrial brush pack, which is already in Procreate, and we'll use the twisted tree brush. And for our color, we'll use this color over here, fifth color in the first row. The opacity of this brush is at 70% and the size is at 18%. And now let's add some basic texture on our 
mountain range. I'm using very little pressure going over these mountains and the brush is called Twisted Tree, but I think it looks way more like, like a stone mountainy texture. I think it's absolutely perfect for these types of paintings. It's a little bit like this, just very subtle. And what we'll do next is use the selection tool. That's the S shape ribbon. And we'll set it to freehand. Make sure that color fill is not turned on. So this should be white and not blue. And we are going to use some selections to get some crisp edges for our mountains. Now you can imagine that this part, that's a little mountain. Follow this and make a jagged diagonal line downward. Then loop around, close that selection. And now that we have a selection, we can only paint inside of the selection. So let's grab our brush again, make it a little bit smaller. Let's say 4%. And let's go along the edge here and make that a little bit lighter. Then turn off the selection by tapping it and then tap it again so we can make another selection. Let's imagine this peak here that goes down here. Loop around, close the selection and then tap the brush. And again, go along the edge, making that a little bit lighter. And tap the selection tool again and we'll move on. Tap the selection again. And for instance, let's make a crack over here. Go downward diagonally, loop around, close the selection, grab the brush. And over here, again, go along the edge. Tap the S shape ribbon again, and let's move on. Let's tap it again for a new selection. For instance, over here, we'll follow this. And you can make the line a little bit jagged. Loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and go along the edge. Then tap the S shape ribbon again. Let's also add a little bit of that light here at the top. Definitely some light will be hitting there. Then grab the S shape ribbon again. We'll follow this line. So we'll follow this diagonal line and then extend it over here. Loop around, close the selection, grab the brush and go along the edge. Tap the S shape ribbon. And now let's work on this one. Tap the S shape ribbon again. Extend this line here. Loop around, close the selection, grab the brush and go along the edge. And again, tap the S shape ribbon. We'll move on to the right. Tap the S shape ribbon again. Let's go over here loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and add some light. Tap the S shape ribbon again and again. Then let's follow this diagonal. Loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and add some light. Then again, tap the S shape ribbon, tap it again for a new selection. Let's go for this one. And you can see that, that these mountains are already starting to look more like mountains. Let's tap the brush. A little bit of light along the edge. Then again, tap the S shape ribbon and again, now let's follow this one. Loop around, 
close the selection, grab the brush, and go along the edge. And then tap the S shape ribbon again. Now we'll do the same with some darker areas, but we are going to grab a different brush. We'll use a charcoals brush and we'll use the fine charcoal. And for the color, we'll grab this one over here. It's the sixth color in the first row. Let's set the opacity of this brush to 80% and let's set the size to 10%. And let's do the trick with the selection tool again. Let's tap the S shape ribbon. And let's go along this edge, loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and let's go along this edge for a little bit of a shadow here. Just a little bit. And tap the S shape ribbon again. You can see that it adds more depth. We don't have to do this with all of the cracks, just a few. Let's tap the S shape ribbon again. For instance, let's darken the area here. Let's follow that line. Loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and add a little bit of shadow here. A little bit of darkness. Then tap the S shape ribbon again. I also want to go over this area here because the light is hitting this edge, but here we have a little bit of a shadow area and perhaps a little bit of darkness here at the top over here. We just want a nice variation of dark and light here on our mountains. Let's also add dark area there. Let's grab the S shape ribbon. Go along this edge, loop around, close the selection, grab the brush, and add some shadow here. And tap the S shape ribbon again. Let's add a little bit of darkness here. And we can add some dark touches on this one. Now there's also some snow lying in, like in the valley. Let's grab a different brush to create that. Let's go to the drawing brushes and use the Eagle Hawk brush. Now for this brush, the opacity is set to 100% and the size is set to 40%. And for the color, let's grab this color over here. It'll be our base snow color. It's the seventh color in the first row. And now let's go over this valley and add some snow there. Follow that curve of this mountain here a little bit. And we'll go to the right here. It's moving up that mountain a little bit. can make the brush a little bit smaller. Let's go for 20%. And let's add some touches here on the side of the mountain. There's a lot of snow. Curving around the mountain here, just a little bit. Now we have a nice base of snow here. I want to add some more light touches to the mountain itself. We'll be using the fine liner brush for that. It's part of the treasure chest brush pack. We used it earlier. Where is it? Over here, fine liner brush. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's set it to 10% in size. The opacity is still at 100%. And I will go along these, these cliffs, these cracks, and add some of these random lines, some more texture to our mountain. We can also add some here.
just make it nice and jagged a little bit randomized over here and let's make one going in the direction of this edge and it might look it might feel like it's a bit messy but it'll look great on these mountains follow this edge of this ridge and over here it's a light edge there's some snow there over here some more touches of snow and focus on those edges of these mountains over here as well going along the left side of this mountain adding that snow that this one some random curved lines that's some snow on the side of this mountain there are also some cracks here at the top, over here, and along these mountains, just some random, these diagonal lines, adding more interest to these, to these mountains here. Also add some of these horizontal lines. like layers of, of rock give it a nice rough appearance also make a crack over here some of these random lines I do feel while I'm working on this that Perhaps the mountains could go a little bit lighter, but that's that's no problem. Because perhaps we can go over with the twisted tree brush just a little bit more to add even more of that texture and blend everything nicely together. Let's try that out. Let's go to that brush again, or we can just go to recent and there we'll find twisted tree. Let's use it with this light color. Now let's just go over some of these areas and add a little bit more light. I'm trying to keep away from those darkest areas. But this nicely merges everything. Let's make the brush a bit bigger again. 18%. So just in a few areas, a little bit more. I like this. Now we'll go back to the Eagle Hawk brush. It's also still part of our recent brushes. We have just used it and we are going to grab an even lighter color. This one over here, the eight color in the first row for the lightest parts of the snow. Now, like I said, the light is coming from this direction and it would hit this area in the snow. So let's add some of these curved diagonal lines here where the sun is hitting the snow. And along this side of the mountain. Just a few touches. Perhaps over here at the top, with some bright light. I think this is looking great. But now we are going to add some extra touches because right now it looks really cool, but that sunlight has a warmth to it. It'll add some warm tones to our mountains and by adding those in our painting, we will make this mountain range look even more realistic. And a way to add that warm light is by creating a new layer on top of this one by tapping the plus, 
we'll set it to clipping mask so whatever we paint on this layer it'll only show up on our mountains and we are going to change the layer blending mode of this layer we'll tap the n and we'll set it to add add is a great layer blending mode when you want to add light when we paint on this layer you will still be able to see all of those textures but at the same time we'll lighten up areas and for our color, we are going to use this one first, the fifth color in the second row, a nice red color. And now with our Eagle Hawk brush, let's go over this area very gently. A light pressure over here as well. We're imagining that light from the sun hitting these mountains here and here on this side. When you look around in nature, you will find so much color, so much more color than you would expect. These mountains aren't just like gray or bluish. You will find many more colors. Let's also imagine the light hitting here on the right side of this mountain here. Very gently, light pressure. Perhaps a little bit more over here. These nice warm touches. Now we'll switch to the yellow orangey color, the sixth color in the second row. For some more touches of that light, a little bit over here and on this side of this mountain. And on these, on the edges. A little bit of light from that sun is seeping through. Just a little bit here. And maybe some yellow over here. Now this really made our mountains come to life. If your light is a little bit too much, then you can just go to the layer, tap the A, and lower the opacity a bit to make it more subtle. I'm going to set it to 90%. But perhaps in your case, you need 80 or 70. Try to get a feel for it and make it look a bit like this. For the next step, we are going to move on to our hills with trees, our forest layer. Let's go to the layer, layer three. And what we'll do is create a layer on top by tapping the plus and using clipping mask again. So tap it, tap clipping mask, and now for our brush, we are going to use a brush from the treasure chest again. And that's the, the pine tree forest brush. This is a super handy brush to create pine tree forests in an instant. For our brush color, let's grab this one over here. First color in the second row. And the brush opacity is set to 100% and let's set the size to 5%. And let's go over these hills here. Try to keep gaps between the trees. Let's also add some trees here. I'm using very gentle pressure. And I'm not even sure if you can see it properly on camera because it's so subtle, but I sure hope you do. I'll switch to a lighter color, this one over here. Third color in the second row. Let's make the brush a little bit smaller, 4%, and we'll go over this area here. Now we're using a bit of a lighter color because the sun is hitting those trees there. And I'll go to a different color. We'll use this one over here, third color in the third row for the trees over here. Again, try to keep some gaps. To get this effect of these pine trees here, we can also add a few of these lighter ones here. A little bit more over here. Perhaps here are some more lighter trees. 
Let's make the brush even smaller, 3%. And let's go over this area for a few light trees here where the sun is hitting. Now to merge it a bit more with the background, I want to smudge that layer that we have created earlier. That layer three on which we use the tarot layer brush. We are going to use the smudge tool. Let's still keep it at the wet acrylic brush. And we are going to blend this with the background a bit with the snow. We're just going to pull downward a bit with these vertical strokes. And this way it'll nicely blend. It'll blur a little bit because it's far away. So you won't see it very crisp, very sharp. It'll be a bit more blurred in the background. And this way it nicely blends with that snow. Just these short vertical strokes along the edge. Along the entire line. Until you are all the way on the left side. Next we'll move on to our grass layer. It's really flat right now. Let's give it some more texture. Let's go there to layer four and turn on alpha lock. So tap it, turn on alpha lock and for our brush, let's go to our recent brushes and use the, do we still have it? Yeah, the Eagle Hawk brush. Let's set the color to this one over here. First color in the third row. The opacity of the brush is still at 100% and let's set the size perhaps to 100%. Let's check. That's perfect. So opacity at 100, size at 100. And now let's make some strokes. And we are making these curved lines over our hill. It's a bit of a rounded shape. It's curving upward. So try making these curved lines. We just want some basic texture here for our grass. Some color variation. Then let's also go to the painting brushes and then use the, what was it again? The dry brush over here at the bottom. The opacity of this brush is at 100% and let's set the size to, let's say 16%. Now let's use this as well for some more texture. I'm still using the same color and we're pushing and pulling. This gives some nice texture. Let's also grab a different color. Let's grab this orangey color, for example. That's the eight color in the third row. Now let's just go over here for some, just a few dabs actually, just a few touches of that warm color. Then we'll move on to another brush. It's under organic. Over here, we'll use the cotton brush. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and let's set the size to 12%. And now we can go over here and add even more color variation. And using, again, very light pressure. And then for our color, let's switch to this one. Sixth color and the third row. Let's go along the edge here and light it up a little bit. Just like this, a little bit on this side, a little bit of light here as well in this corner. But this way we're getting some nice blotches, some nice color variation on this layer of grass. Now let's switch and use this color once more, first color in the third row, to just go over this area and 
merge it together a little bit. Making rounded motions and some dabs. I think this is looking fine. Let's let's continue. Let's move on and add some trees right right behind this hill. To make them behind this hill, we need a layer underneath the hill. So first tap layer seven, then tap the plus. And for our brush, we are going to use a brush from the treasure chest again. So let's go there. And we are going to use the pine trees. It is based on the pine tree forest. I've made some adjustments on this brush to be able to create a little row of pine trees over here. Now for the color, let's grab this one first, fourth color and the third row. The opacity of the brush is at 100% and the size is at 14%. And let's just go along this edge and add some of these trees. Just like this, they're pretty dark right now. Then we'll move on to the next color, this one over here, the fifth color in the third row. And let's make the brush a little bit smaller, let's say 8%. And let's go over here and add some of these lighter trees. I'm just making layers of trees here. Then we'll move on to the next color, this yellowish color, sixth color in the third row for some lighter trees as well. It's, it's like fall is on the way so we can see many different colors in our trees. Now we have a pretty nice variation here and now it's time to add our final trees and we are going to add them on a layer on top of our hill. So first tap layer four and tap the plus for a new layer. Now to create these trees, we are going to use a new brush that I have also added to the treasure chest. It's the fine pine brush. And for our starting color, we are going to use this one over here. It's almost black, 10th color in the third row. Now the opacity of this brush is at 100% and the size is at 30%. And we'll start by creating a vertical line here by using very little pressure and let's make another one right next to it for another tree let's just make these vertical lines first make a set of trees some will be a little bit taller this one to about here and a smaller one right next to it so we have five of these vertical lines and now we'll start making these lines outward. So these diagonal lines moving upward and at the beginning of your stroke use more pressure and less as you move outwards. So now we have a very dark tree, but we can switch to another color. This one over here, that's the ninth color in the third row. And we can go on top and add some of these lighter parts. But try to keep those, those darker gaps visible. So short diagonal strokes. Then we'll move on to this one. Now to switch to the dark color easily, you can just tap and hold the circle and it'll switch back to the previous color. So let's start with the dark one. Add some of these branches. Bigger ones here at the bottom. And make them go up a little bit diagonally with a slight curve. Then we'll switch to the lighter color again. So tap and hold the circle. And then let's add these lighter parts. Just make sure that you also see that dark area 
on the inside of that tree. So we have a dark base and we build some of those lighter branches on top. And let's also make a warm orangey tree. Let's grab this color first. The, that's the seven color in the third row. And let's use that for this tree. To add some color variation here, some nice warm tones. Make it bigger here at the bottom. So make your strokes longer there. Now I want that that stem to be visible. So let's grab that dark color again. Now let's just go over a little bit so we can still see it. Then I want to switch to this lighter color. That's the eight color in the third row. And add some lighter touches. Just some variation for our branches. We can even switch to the yellow, that's the sixth color in the third row, and add even lighter touches. We can actually also use that on these. Let's add a slight touch of yellow. Get a few of these strokes just at the tips where the sunlight is hitting. Now we'll move on to the next tree. First, grab the dark color, 10th color, and the third row. And then we'll make these branches. So upward strokes, a little bit rounded, longer as you go to the bottom. Then let's switch to the green, ninth color in the third row. Start at the top, make short diagonal lines. If you press lightly, your stroke will be thinner. Just a few over here. Then for our last one, dark color first again, last color in the third row. Start here at the top. Make your strokes longer as you move down. And grab the green again. You can just tap and hold the circle to switch to the previous color. And then add these lighter branches. And let's also add some of that orange that eight color in the third row for a few warm touches on this tree as well. And this one can also add some of that orange. And I want to add some of that yellow. So that's the sixth color in the third row. Just some light at the top. Now I do feel like perhaps we can move our trees a little bit to the right. So let's just go to the move and transform tool over here. Let's turn off snapping. We don't need that here. And let's just place them over here. I think that's the perfect place. I want to add a little bit of shadow to these trees. So let's make a new layer on top by tapping the plus. Then setting that to clipping mask. And then setting the layer blending mode to multiply. Multiply is perfect when you want to add shadows without losing any of the texture. For our brush, we are going to use the soft brush, which you can find under airbrushing. 
And for the color, let's just grab this one over here. Fourth color in the third row. The opacity of the brush is at 60% and let's set the size to 12%. And let's just go over this lower area for a little bit of shadow there. Because like I said, the light is coming from here. So we are looking at a little bit of the shadow side of these trees. And they will also cast a shadow on the grass. Light is coming from here, casting that shadow. Now to easily create that shadow, we are going to duplicate this layer, layer nine, drag to the left and tap duplicate, then go to the bottom layer nine. Now on this layer, we are going to turn on alpha lock and we still have this color selected. That's the fourth color in the third row. You're going to tap this layer and then say fill layer. Of course, we won't say it out loud. You just need to tap it. Then we are going to set this layer to multiply. So tap the N, scroll up to multiply, and then we'll go to the move and transform tool, the little arrow. Then we'll tap flip vertical and we'll move these trees downwards. Let me move the canvas up a little bit. And then while it's set to distort, we're going to distort this layer a bit to make sure that the bottom parts are touching the trees and we are going to move it this way. You can just use all of these handles to transform your trees and then make sure that it's diagonal. You can use these handles to make it touch the trees and then switch to warp because that way you can just grab any of these parts and make this shadow a little bit rounded because it's a hill, it's curved. So let's make the shadow a little bit curved as well because it, it'll curve around that, that hill. So it's moving upward a little bit. So you can really just drag any part of this, this mesh to transform your shadows. So make it look something like this and then you can just tap the arrow again. And then I do feel like they are a little bit dark. So let's go to the layer, tap the M and lower the opacity to let's say 70%. And that's it. You have made it to the end of this tutorial. You should be really proud of yourself. Go ahead and share your results. Or perhaps you want to turn this into a streak and follow another tutorial right away. Perhaps you will like this one, for instance. I would like to thank you for watching and I will see you next time for the next tutorial.